glad to, glad you've decided to spend a little bit of time with me tonight. Um, I do want to keep this a little bit short tonight. My, my name is Dr. Troy Giles. I'm a chiropractic physician and I'm specialized in health and well-being as well as coaching um, other doctors on how to uh, do or create wellness centers and, and support their practices. So I wrote this book, The Top 25 Conditions and More in, uh, in Natural Health. So this book you can download if you haven't already downloaded it. Um, and you can print that and have that as far as a desk reference for yourselves in your practices. Um, this will be discussing what I found in my, in my practice. Uh, it's not triple blind studied, it's not all those wonderful things, but it is what I found effective in my office. And so I've been practicing about 22 years now and just love it. I've had a lot of uh, excitement. So let's talk about anxiety tonight. Uh, most causes I find are emotional. Um, or have an emotional component to them. They're either going to be a conscious issue that you can remember that's happened to you, something that you either did that you wish you hadn't have done, didn't do that you would like to have done, or that was done to you that you wish never happened. So as these things happened, happened to us, these emotions are, are products of stored emotional trauma and in, go into the subconscious. So I kind of explain this idea as when we have issues in our lives, when we've had past traumas, it's like putting a rock, an emotional rock, in a backpack that we carry around. Well, after a while, those backpacks get really heavy of past situations that have taken place. So as we carry that stress and that extra pressure on us, it begins to cause us our, our autonomic nervous systems to run abnormally, to where we're literally running from a bear at the same time as we're digesting our steak, as we'll talk about here in a minute. So we want to discuss kind of how we can let go of those emotions as well as the other um, causes of anxiety, neurotransmitters, um, mycotoxins from fungus, those kind of things. So this, this uh, point here, anxiety disorders are the most common mental illness in the U.S. affecting 18% of the population. That is anxiety. So it's so common. We see it with all of our patients. So like I was saying before, the autonomic nervous system is what's affected by these emotions, by this, this anxiety. So when we're in an anxious anxiety attack, literally we're in both sympathetic and parasympathetic at the same time. So we're fighting whatever's in front of us or we're flighting, we're running away from it, but at the same time we might be filtering and digesting, so now we've created an ulcer or we've, um, an issue in our stomachs of um, whatever anxiety that we're carrying. So anxiety causes dominance with both of these systems at one time. But this is what, what it is when we're running and we're in, in um, uh, sympathetic um, stress, if you will. So the patient could literally be living in the past subconsciously, causing the autonomic system to fire, some, or fire stimulus in both directions, causing chaos in the body. That's what happens when, we, when we're in an anxiety attack. So Anxiousness or anxiety is something that is coming from, I find, generally the subconscious. So let's say that we've been, uh, let's use a chiropractic office for example. Let's say when we were younger and our mothers dragged us to the chiropractor and we got that famous neck adjustment and we heard those pops and cracks and it scared us. And let's say we were five and that, that programmed not only into our mind as it happened but into our subconscious as well. The smell of the building the colors on the walls, the feeling that we had when our neck cracked. And now we enter 20 years later, now we're 25 years old coming into a chiropractor's office, and all of a sudden we're uptight in a fight or flight response. And, we don't, and this is a totally different person 20 years later. This would be coming from subconscious. So those subconscious emotions need to be let go of. And there's various techniques that we'll discuss in a minute. Not in, in detail, but here's a, somewhat of a list. So the different techniques to release emotions, are there are many, but determine which type is best for you and your client or your patient. So a few sub-modalities, examples would be neuroemotional technique, or NET, kinesiology, reimprinting, hypnotic regression, trigger, trigger deactivation, deconstruction, normalizing. The technique that I use is called BEST, bioenergy synchronization technique. But I also use just a real quick paper where I have the patient um, write, make a list for me, the, a three-columned list, what they did that they wish they hadn't have done, 
And when I, when I have them make this list, I just have them write one word for every experience they can remember that they did that they wish they hadn't have done. So they might have 10 words in that list. The next list over would be things that they didn't do that they would like to have done. And then the third column is things that were done to them that they wish never happened. Then through a process of cross-crawl, which is basically when the patient's standing and they're putting one hand on the opposite knee, let's say the right hand on the left knee, the left hand on the right knee, this is called cross-crawl. As they're cross-crawling, I have them do a forgiveness program. Literally, I'm telling them, okay, forgive yourself for any negative emotion that you're feeling as you're thinking about this particular conscious issue. Forgive yourself, not that you've done anything wrong, but you're choosing to allow that emotion to leave your body now. Next, forgive the other person who might be involved. Now allow others who you have affected to forgive you. So I create a circle of forgiveness with the patient while they're in that cross-crawl mode. Cross-crawling helps to activate the center, both the right and left sides of their brain, so that they're now literally letting go of the emotion. Then I have a, a, another subconscious list that I use that I can go in further details, or you can look anything up if you would like more information on the BEST technique, B-E-S-T. Whatever, whatever you do to work with emotion, we've, we've got to help them to let those emotions go. Those rocks of emotion that they're carrying in their backpack stink. They're heavy. They cause, them, they cause the, the patient to come out of subconscious so that they're living from the past, from their past emotion, their past living, instead of living presently. Um, I'm just thinking if there's anything else I can say there. But we've got to get into those, to those emotions, let them go, so that the patient can turn those experiences, those rocks, out of their backpack. They'll take one rock at a time, forgive it, let the emotion go, and turn that rock into a tool that they can now put into their tool belt for future issues. The last thing I do there is that I help them, have them think about uh, what is the life lesson. If they can get the life lesson that they learn and why they're a better person because of what took place, now they truly can let it go. It's a great thing. Okay, so physiological effects of anxiety. Generally speaking, the only thing that we really know is to give them an antidepressant. Um, and this is quite a clever uh, picture here, and not that I'm totally against antidepressants. I think um, occasionally they can, um, they can be effective. But generally speaking, it's just blowing away a, a symptom. Now, I'm, I hope I'm not offending anybody on the line here. Um, many of us are on antidepressants, but, but in reality, as, as we all can think about it, it's just covering over the symptom. Well, we'll say, well, wait a minute, isn't there an issue? Don't we have a, a, a neurotransmitter deficit or a, or a hyper deficit or a hyper um, active issue here that we can manipulate and make it different? Yes, that is a, a symptom, I feel, of the emotion. You clear the emotions, people calm down. I've done it 22 years now. It works. So there are other things that we'll discuss tonight that are natural anti-anxieties, um, if you will. The one that we'll be discussing is Cetaquil. That helps to sedate, if you will, slightly and bring tranquility to the patient. So they call it Cetaquil from Innovita. And that's something that the patient can take during the day as a calmative and in the evening before prior to, to uh, retiring for bed to help them sleep and get into a deeper REM sleep so that we can actually affect their circadian rhythm. So that's uh, very effective. So, Physiological effects of anxiety, gastrointestinal disorders, chronic respiratory disorders, heart disease, pharmacological drug toxicity, and basically diminished adrenal function is what happens when we're constantly causing stress on our symptom, on our, on our um, adrenal glands. So these emotions in the subconscious and conscious cause us to have too much adrenal discharge. So we have a basically weakened adrenal function. So as we see here in this next slide, the adrenal glands are the pawns of our chest game. The, they are the things that are affected right out there all the time because of stress. So they're the main organs connected with stress. So this is a good way to explain to patients. As you feel stress, whatever it is, 
whether what you're seeing or smelling or interpreting from your nervous system, your adrenal glands are going to respond. And as we discuss here on our next uh, um, couple of slides, we'll discuss how you can determine if we have adrenal deficiency. The adrenal deficiency is what is one of the major causes of the anxiety as far as when our bodies wear down enough, when the adrenal glands aren't able to produce enough adrenaline to keep us up, we then become, uh, we have the anxiety. It's literally to go to church, to walk into church takes adrenal dysfunction or adrenal um, a squirt, if you will, of adrenaline. Um, I, in my church, I'm, a kind of, I'm, I'm one of the leaders in my church, and so I'm meeting with the congregation every Sunday. And it, it takes adrenaline. I can feel it that when I'm done with church, I, um, I feel a little bit tired because I've been on that adrenal, that adrenal um, output for a little bit uh, longer. But when you don't have enough adrenaline being produced, it's very, it causes a lot of anxiety to have social interaction because you have to be on your game. You've got to be bright and, and shiny. You've got to think and be able to remember people's names. So I find that the adrenal dysfunction is one of the major reasons. Besides the emotions, the adrenal dysfunction would be a, a second major reason. So the next couple of, of slides are going to discuss some testing that we can do to determine if we have adrenal dysfunction. The first and most and easiest one I find is orthostatic hypotension. The test here is that we take the blood pressure, usually laying down is going to be the best. So we lay the patient on their back, take the blood pressure, and then we have them sit back up. A drop of 10 points or more is considered orthostatic hypotension. Hypotis means below function, so ad adrenal deficiency. This is one of the easiest, nicest ways to determine how the adrenals are functioning. Again, take the, temp, the blood pressure laying down, then have them stand up and take the blood pressure again. The blood pressure should raise 10 points or at uh, 10 points when the patient stands. That's one of the major functions of the adrenal glands is to cause the, the uh, contraction of the arteries so that you're maintaining, at least maintaining the blood pressure. But a lot of people that, that feel dizzy as they're standing, you can ask them, you know, as you're taking the history, do you get dizzy when you stand up? Oh yeah, all the time. I, I always feel dizzy. Again, that they're dropping their blood pressure as they stand up, in in relationship to not having enough adrenal dis, uh, adrenal output. The second thing though, that I like to do is the um, pupillary contraction dilation test, where momentarily shine a flashlight into the eye of the pupil for the for the pupil to, to contract. So you shine it in, you want to see the pupil contract up. The pupil should hold the contraction for five seconds before returning to a dilated state or a more a normal state. If a pupil starts to dilate or, or shimmy or, or in, it kind of usually um, uh, starts to wobble or fasciculate or it kind of shakes for just a second, in one or two seconds, that is going to be adrenal function, adrenal fatigue. The adrenal glands are in charge or they keep that constriction. So if, not, if, not, if the autonomic system isn't sensing it, it's not releasing enough, it will go into the dilation or back open again. So it's not actually dilated like we're seeing. Um, it's going to be a change. So normally it looks like this. We shine the light in the eye. It, it tightens up more than this. And then we're looking for it to, to kind of shake a bit or, or at least maintain that constriction. If it starts to wobble open again before five seconds, then we know we've got an issue. So these two you can do in your, in your office. The third is to have um, the adrenals checked through the salivary test. And this is uh, to further quantify low adrenal function, complete a salivary test, there's additional costs. And that's something that you can do to objectify, uh, quantify your adrenal fatigue. This is something that, that will help you as a practitioner and the patient. The other things that I find that cause um, anxiety would be gut dysfunction, layers of infection. And guys, I hope you don't get tired of this, but I'm going to pretty much relate most everything that we talk about back to the gut. But specifically in this issue, with fungal overgrowth potential. Many who suffer from anxiety also suffer from fungus overgrowth. Mycotoxins from fungus produce fatigue in the nervous system and anxiety. So those mycotoxins are just very neurotoxic and they cause that, that um, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, like we talked about last time with treating uh, uh, fungus as well, but that need for sugar need for um, 
uh, the foggy brain, all of that can create more anxiety. Because it's, it's just terrible when you can't think and keep your mind set. So as we talk about layers of infection, we then go into to, um, fungex. That's, that's the one that I think I find most often the cause as far as layers of infection. But we'll talk here in a minute, all the different layers of infection are an issue. But this is the major treatment possibility for the anxiety as I look at it. So fungex is the number one cause, I believe, as far as infections go, of anxiety. So fungex is going to get rid of the fungus by killing it through old age. It dies of natural cause, the fungus does, versus um, being killed. It's rendered incapable of producing more fungus. So there we're, we're getting it so that it can't create more. So it dies of old age. Now this is a bit different than Diflucan. So Diflucan is, um, a, is a, a pharmaceutical that kills it by whatever touches it kills the fungus. The problem that I find is my assertion is, is that the pseudopods or the arms that penetrate back down into the colon, those are going deeper into the colon. And I think when the major body dies, that those those uh, penetrated areas of the, of the pseudopods will regrow as the major body dies away from the, from the diflucan. It sloughs off, but once the threat of the diflucan is removed, that, those pseudopods will regrow again. So I like the fungex because it kills, kills it of old age. The sedaquil is very nice to sedate and cause tranquility. So this is basically relief, relax, and sedation. So this helps sedate frayed nerves, um, that overall daily anxiety that people feel. It also then can be used at bedtime to, uh, to, to help them get into a deeper REM sleep. Serologic is very effective because it helps to um, support brain function, um, specifically in the neurotransmitters. So serologic I really like. Calcomp, again calcium and, and the other constituents of this supplement help for, for calming down as well. Femifirm and Manifirm support the male endocrine system or the female endocrine system and the male endocrine system. So oftentimes there's, um, you know, there's a, um, an endocrine issue here as well. So this is the main line defense, I think, for treating anxiety. Now as we go in um, on our uh, other, other treatments as well, PM Sync are along with our Femifirm. So PM Sync is for PMS symptoms. Femifirm on the previous slide is this one is taken from day four to day 20 of the cycle. If menstruation starts on day one, day four is when Femifirm. This is going to support the endometrium and the uterus and overall. And then PM Sync works with PMS symptoms. This is taken from day 21 through day four of the cycle. And this is going to help, again, anxiety. Adrenex supports the adrenal glands, helps to repair the DNA function of the adrenals. Again, those of you who might not know, the whole, the whole system here of Inovita is designed to repair the DNA function of that particular organ. Now you might say, really? Really? That's a big claim there, buddy. Well, I can make that claim because I'm, I'm not an employee of Inovita. But they're designed to support and repair the DNA strands. And we can talk about that later or you can get the little video that Inovita has that explains how that concept is. But the adrenex supports the adrenal glands, thyroidin, again for the thyroid. So the adrenal and the thyroid, and the other one would be hypothala. Hypothala works with the hypothalamus, and many times with anxiety, the hypothalamus is shot uh, from hypothalamitis or inflammation of the hypothalamus. So it's, it's the, the part of the brain that controls pituitary, and ultimately pituitary is the master gland that is the, is the gatekeeper for all the other feedback loops to the endocrine system. So note, support these areas for two weeks prior to treating any layers of infection. Layers of infection can cause anxiety. So fungus, heavy metals, parasites are often found in, paras in patients with anxiety as well. But what I like to do is I usually like to treat a patient for a couple of weeks, getting their mojo, their constitution, their energy up before I start to go after layers of infection because it just it kind of takes from them. That will diminish any Hirschheimer's reaction or detox reactions. So again, determine the layers of infection. You can do this through kinesiology or gut sense or whatever technique you have to determine what they might have. It's pretty, pretty hard to determine 
if there's a bacterial infection or a viral infection in their brain, unless you're doing kinesiology or, or have a, an electrodermal screening um, unit. Um, medically, it's, it's very difficult as far as what we have in medicine to do a, a um, um, but without the kinesiology, it's pretty difficult to, to know what layer of infection. But let's run through these real quick. Bactoex is for bacteria, MetaX for metals. Microcyte is microparasite. Anything smaller than the naked eye can see. Those are going to be amoebas, um, flagellates, any of those that, that are microscopic. These can be anywhere in the body. They can be literally anywhere. Um, I find them a lot of the time with, pancre with pancreatitis or, or um, uh, diabetes. They'll get into the, the tail of the pancreas and set up shop there. Microcyte, Paramax, large parasite. Excuse me, I'm going back to microcyte. This is to be taken for 40 days usually um, for them to kill. Paramac is 10 days on, 5 days off. This helps uh, kill the adults, but, but you've got to be able to have the adults clear before, you can, uh, before the larva will hatch. So you have a 10 days on and a 5 day rest so that those, the, the larva will hatch. Fungex is just straight through. Um, working with Fungex, you also need to think of Vivaprofen, Fluorescin. I haven't you've been using fluorescin as much. I need to bring that on board. Fluorescin is, is the overall repair or reapplication of the good bacteria. Fluorescin is, is the overall repair or reapplication of the good bacteria. Vivaprofen is more for uh, getting rid of inflammation in the gut as well as reestablishment of the good bacteria. Those two, fluorescin and vivaprofen, go along with fungex because you want to get rid of the fungus as well as reestablish the good bacteria. And ViroX is for the virus, removing the, the viruses out. And they can, I find them in the brain. You say, well, really, you got a virus there? Once you have an infection, once you have a fever, not necessarily. You can have layers, which means 5 or 10% count, but it's still enough that you're cause, having people sick, if you will. OK, so again, um, on this one here, here's the protocol. You can kind of look through this. This is in the book as well, but Nerval, roughly one capsule four times a day. That balances the nerves. Adrenex, one capsule three times a day. Usually, you want to do the Adrenex breakfast, lunch, mid-afternoon, and try not to give it to them in the after and later in the afternoon and evening. Sometimes it makes them have difficulty sleeping. Serologic, four caps per day for brain function. Cetaquil, one to two in a day, and will help diminish the, the anxiety during the day. And... At bedtime, I'll usually have them take, say, one at 9. If they're going to go to bed at 10, take another one at 10. And uh, last thought, Cetaquil is very effective for clients when taken during the day to diminish that brain chatter and sedate frayed nerves. So consider looking at emotional causes for anxiety to see if you have a treatment technique. If not, consider a concurrent referral. There's people that you know that, that will be able to help you through that as well.